Hi bookish besties, my name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. And if you are already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today it is already time to discuss my June book of the month predictions. <music> All right, everybody, it is already that time of the month where we discuss the potential add-ons or monthly curated selections that Book of the Month might feature. Now, as a quick reminder, I am no longer doing recaps at the beginning of these videos. I am now doing a completely separate video where I'm going to review all of the selections that actually do come out for Book of the Month, whether I selected any or whether I passed on the box and so on. So be sure to keep your eye out for that in June after we know what Book of the Month is going to feature for that month. Now, I'm gonna be fully transparent here. June is going to be the month of repeat authors for Book of the Month. And what I mean by that is a lot of authors that have been previously featured on Book of the Month in the past have releases coming out in June. And if it were not for those repeat authors, I honestly do not have very strong feelings about any of the releases coming out in June as far as their potential to be Book of the Month selections. I did what I could to compile a list, but aside from the repeat authors, I don't really have very many strong feelings about a lot of these releases. So we're going to see. I'm very interested come June 1st to see what Book of the Month actually selected. Before we get into the predictions, I do want to mention that there is already a confirmed add-on that is going to be available for for you to add to your box for the month of June. And that is the new release by Ruth Ware called One Perfect Couple. Also, I did wanna briefly mention that for a minute, The Last Murder at the End of the World by Stuart Turton was also there as an add-on, but it has since been removed. And Book of the Month has sent out communications that they don't believe that they are going to be able to fulfill this order. Now, I don't know if that means that the book is permanently not going to be available on Book of the Month or whether they have to wait until closer to the actual release date of the book before they are actually able to put it up on their website to be added to the box. So take of that what you will. I wanted to mention both of those here so that you are aware that they are already available and they are not going to be part of my June Book of the Month predictions, especially of course because they were May releases. So as per usual, starting with the mystery thriller horror genre category, we of course have the newest release by Riley Sager called Middle of the Night. Now I do want to give a caveat here in that in years past, for the most part, Riley Sager's releases do come out in June, but they are almost always featured on Book of the Month in July. So I'm almost 100% confident that Book of the Month is going to feature Middle of the Night at some point, but I do not know whether it will be in June or whether it will be July. My money is actually on July, but of course, because this newest release is coming out in June, I'm not going to feature it for the July Book of the Month predictions, so I do need to talk about it here. But this is following our main character, Ethan, and the worst thing that ever happened to him was when one July night, he was with his best friend and neighbor, Billy. They fell asleep in a tent in their backyard, and then they woke up and Billy was gone. 30 years later, Ethan has reluctantly returned to his childhood home. Plagued by bad dreams and insomnia, he begins to notice strange things happening in the middle of the night. Someone seems to be roaming the cul-de-sac at odd hours, and signs of Billy's presence keep appearing in Ethan's Ethan's backyard. Is someone playing a cruel prank or has Billy, long thought to be dead, somehow returned to Hemlock Circle? The mysterious occurrences prompt Ethan to investigate what really happened that night, a quest that reunites him with former friends and neighbors and leads him into the woods that surround Hemlock Circle. Woods where Billy claimed monsters roamed and where a mysterious institute does clandestine research on a crumbling estate. The closer Ethan gets to the truth, the more he realizes that no place, be it quiet forest or suburban street, is completely safe and that the past has a way of haunting the present. So y'all know that I'm a stand for Riley Sager. No matter how hit or miss he could be for me, I will always pick up anything that this man writes. And considering how much I absolutely loved The Only One Left by Riley Sager, I have absolute confidence that I'm going to love this as well. And like I said, I'm 100% confident that this is going to be featured at some point. I just don't know whether it's going to be June or July. Another author that has been previously featured on Book of the Month that has a new release coming out is Lucy Foley with The Midnight Feast. Now I have mixed feelings on Lucy Foley. I read the guest list and I thought it was just okay, but highly entertaining. Like I didn't absolutely hate my reading experience of it, but it was nothing that was absolutely mind blowing. Then I read The Paris Apartment and I was absolutely bored out of my mind for like 75% of that book. And then we got to the twist, which I really enjoyed. And it kind of bumped up my reading experience of that. So Lucy Foley so far has not knocked it out of the park. But if this were to be featured on Book of the Month, I probably would go ahead and pick it up just to give her a third and final chance. It says it's the opening night of the manor and no expense, small or large, has been spared. And yet just outside the manor's immaculately kept grounds, an ancient forest bristles with secrets. The local community resents what they see as the manor's intrusion into the local woods and attempts to privatize the beach and small skirmishes have erupted on the edges of the property between locals and the staff and the whispers keep coming about an old piece of pagan folklore the night birds an avenging force that can be called upon to make right wrongs that elude the law though surely everything at the manor has been done above board on the sunday morning of opening weekend the local police are called there has been a fire a body's been discovered something's not right with the guests what happened on the grounds of the manor the past 36 hours and who or what is the cause everyone has an agenda everyone has a past but not everyone will survive the midnight feast i'm not really sure how the folklore aspect is going 
to take part in here. I'm a little bit sketch about that. I typically don't love thrillers that are set in realism, throwing in like mysticism or folklore into the stories. So we're going to see. Like I said, I might be willing to give this a shot. I will say that so far the reviews are more on the positive side. It's got a 3.78, but only 1,300 ratings. So it could easily go down or up depending on what happens when it's released. So we're going to see. Definitely keep your eye out for this one. We also have the newest release from Aquiki Amezi called Little Rot. Now I do believe that Aquiki Amezi has been featured on Book of the Month in the past, but I do not believe that her books are typically within the horror thriller genre. I believe that they are more like contemporary literary fiction. So if they do feature Aquiki Amezi again, it would be in a different genre category. This says, Ima and Kalu are a longtime couple who have just split. When Kalu, reeling from his loss, visits a sex party hosted by his best friend Ahmed, he makes a decision that will plunge them all into chaos. Ola and Soraya, two Nigerian sex workers visiting from Kuala Lumpur, intersect with the three old friends as everything goes to hell. Sucked into the city's corrupt underworld, they are all looking for a way out of the trouble they've instigated, driven by loss and fueled by a desperate need to escape the dangerous threat that looms over them. They careen madly in the face of the poison of power, sexual violence, murder, betrayals. Little Rot tests how far these five will go to save each other or themselves when confronted by evil, culminating in a shattering denouement. I have never read anything from a quickie Amezi in the past. I know a lot of people are a fan of her book, You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty. So if you've read her before and this sounds intriguing to you, you might want to go ahead and keep an eye out for this one. And then the very last one that I have for this category is yet another repeat author. It is Ellery Lloyd's newest release called The Final Act of Juliet Willoughby. It looks like there is going to be three different timelines, Paris 1938, Cambridge 1991, and Dubai now. And it says three suspicious deaths over the course of a century is the key to unlocking them all hidden in Juliet Willoughby's lost painting. Okay, so I guess that happens in 1938. Runaway heiress Juliet Willoughby perishes with her married lover in an accidental studio fire alongside her surrealist masterpiece Self-Portrait as Sphinx. In 1991, Cambridge, two art history students stumble across proof something sinister was at play in Juliet's death, threatening to expose the long buried secrets of the artist's aristocratic family. Dubai now. An art dealer is accused of the brutal murder of his oldest friend, the last surviving member of the Willoughby dynasty. So I think it'll be kind of interesting to determine how all of these different timelines come to play with each other. I love books that can do it well. As I mentioned, I know that Ellery Lord has been featured in the past on Book of the Month, so we'll see if it makes its way onto Book of the Month, but I did want to go ahead and mention it here just because they would be a repeat author. All right, moving on into the romance category. Again, we have nothing but repeat authors for this category, starting with the newest release from Catherine Center called The rom -comers. As far as I know, pretty much every single recent Catherine Center release has been featured on Book of the Month, so I would be very, very surprised if they suddenly stopped featuring her. It says, Emma Wheeler desperately longs to be a screenwriter. She spent her life studying, obsessing over, and writing romantic comedies, and good ones, but she's also been the sole caretaker for her kind-hearted dad who needs full-time care. Now, when she gets a chance to rewrite a script for a famous screenwriter, Charlie Yates, it's a break too big to pass up. Emma's younger sister steps in for caretaking duties, and Emma moves to LA for six weeks for the writing gig of a lifetime. But what is it they say? Don't meet your heroes? Charlie Yates doesn't want to write with anyone, much less a failed nobody screenwriter. Worse, the romantic comedy he's written is so terrible it might actually bring on the apocalypse. Plus, he doesn't even care about the script. It's just a means to get a different one green lit. Oh, and he thinks love is an emotional Ponzi scheme. But Emma's not going down without a fight. She will stand up for herself and for rom-coms and for love itself. She will convince him that love stories matter, even if she has to kiss him senseless to do it. But what if that kiss is accidentally amazing? What if real life turns out to be so much more real than fiction? What if the love story they're writing breaks all Emma's rules and comes true? So again, the newest release from Catherine Center comes out in June. I do think it's a high probability of being featured in Book of the Month, either as an add-on or a monthly curated selection. I also definitely do think a strong contender is going to be the newest release from Allie Hazelwood called Not in Love. Book of the Month has pretty much featured every single Allie Hazelwood, including her young adult debut called Check and Mate, I believe it was called. The only book they have not featured by her was Bride. But again, that was definitely a departure for Allie Hazelwood. And that was one that was featured, if I'm not mistaken, in Aardvark's book box. And typically Aardvark and Book of the Month do not overlap with each other. They are definitely very distinct, but I do definitely have hope that the newest one by Allie Hazelwood is going to be featured. I don't think that this one is part of her feminist novels. I definitely could be incorrect, but this says, Rue Cibert might not have it all, but she has enough. A few friends she can always count on, the financial stability she yearned for as a kid, and a successful career as a biotech engineer at Klein, one of the most promising startups in the field of food science. Her world is stable, pleasant, and hard fought until a hostile takeover and its offensively attractive front man threatens to bring it all crumbling down. Eli Kilgore and his business partners want Klein, period. Eli has his own reasons for pursuing this deal, and he's a man who gets what he wants, with one burning exception, Rue, the woman he can't stop thinking about, the woman who's off limits to him. Torn between loyalty and an undeniable attraction, Rue and Eli throw caution out the lab and the boardroom windows. Their affair is secret, no strings attached, and has a built-in deadline, the day one of their companies will prevail. But the heart is risky business, one that plays for keeps. I don't necessarily have hope that this would be the strongest one from Allie Hazelwood, but I'm still definitely willing to give it a try if Book of the Month features it. I've enjoyed some of her romances in the past, definitely not all of them. She could be a hit or miss romance author for me, but I'm certainly willing to give this one a try.
try if it's featured. And then the final one that I want to mention for this category is Leather and Lark by Bryn Reaver, which is the companion novel to Butcher and Blackbird, which has been featured on Book of the Month in the past. I don't really want to read anything about the synopsis just in case there could be minor spoilers for the first one. I don't necessarily think you have to read these in any type of order. Like I said, they are companion novels to my knowledge, not direct sequels. But just for the sake of not risking any spoilers, I don't want to mention anything here. But from what I understand of Butcher and Blackbird, that follows two serial killers who are like trying to out serial killer each other and they end up like falling in love. And there's some really crazy things that happen in there. I have not read it, but it sounds like a good time. If you have read it and you've enjoyed it, please comment down below and let me know if I should check it out. But if you did read it and love it, again, this is a sequel that is coming out in June. And I do think that it could potentially be featured on Book of the Month. All right, then moving on into the literary slash contemporary fiction category, we are going to start with the newest release by Ellen Hildebrand called Swan Song. Now, Book of the Month has featured Ellen Hildebrand multiple, multiple times in the past. And from what I understand, this is going to be the very last book that she writes that has Nantucket as a main setting. But this is supposed to be a pretty big release from her. And like I said, since she's been featured on Book of the Month multiple times, I would be very surprised if they don't feature this one considering how important it's supposed to be. This one actually has a pretty long synopsis. So I'm just going to go ahead and read this blurb. In the grand finale of Queen of the Beach read Ellen Hildebrand's beloved Nantucket novels, there's a new couple in town and they instantly shake things up. Amid the extravagant parties on land and sea, there's trouble on the island, forcing Chief of Police Ed Kapanish to postpone his retirement and changing the fabric of life on the picturesque island forever. It says it's going to be a romance slash chiclet, but also it sounds like there's also going to be like mystery involved. So do with that what you will. Again, keep an eye out for this one in June. The next one I want to mention is Lula Dean's Little Library of Banned Books by Kirsten Miller. Now Kirsten Miller has been featured on Book of the Month in the past with her book called The Change, which was definitely contemporary, but also a little bit fantasy in nature. So this is definitely another genre shift. So again, Kirsten Miller has been featured on Book of the Month, but because of the genre switch, I don't know if she's as likely to be featured again. I'm not entirely positive. This says Beverly Underwood and her arch enemy Lula Dean live in the tiny town of Troy, Georgia. Beverly is on the school board and Lula has become a local celebrity by embarking on a mission to rid the public libraries of all inappropriate books, none of which she's actually read. To replace the pornographic books she's challenged at the local library, Lula starts her own lending library in front of her home, a cute wooden hutch with glass doors and neat rows of the worthy literature that she's sure the town's readers need. But Beverly's daughter Lindsay sneaks in by night and secretly fills Lula Dean's little free library with banned books wrapped in wholesome dust jackets. One by one, neighbors who borrow books from Lula Dean's library find their lives changed in unexpected ways. Finally, one of Lula Dean's enemies discovers the library and decides to turn the tables on her, just as Lula and Beverly are running against each other to replace the town's disgraced mayor. That's when all the townspeople who've been borrowing from Lula's library begin to reveal themselves. It's a diverse and surprising bunch, including the local postman, the prom queen, housewives, a farmer, and the former DA, all of whom have been changed by what they've read. When Lindsay is forced to own up to what she's done, the showdown that's been brewing between Beverly and Lula will roil the whole town and change it forever. So that actually sounds really cute, really sweet. It sounds like it's also going to contain a very solid lesson on what it means to ban books and what you could be preventing from being out in the world, something that's very, very important and can change lives. So I really like the underlying message of this story. So this is definitely one to keep your eye out. I definitely think that it's probably going to be worth the read. All right, this next one is one that recently came on my radar and I absolutely loved the vibes of this one and the overall themes and message of the story. So I wanted to include it here. It's a book simply titled Bear by Julia Phillips. And of course, it's set in the Pacific Northwest and we all know how I love books featured in the Pacific Northwest. It says, Sam and her sister Elena dream of another life. On the island off the coast of Washington where they were born and raised, they and their mother struggle to survive. Sam works long days on the ferry that delivers wealthy mainlanders to their vacation homes while Elena bartends at the local golf club. But even together, they can't earn enough to get by, stirring their frustration about the limits that shape their existence. Then one night on the boat, Sam spots a bear swimming in the dark waters of the channel. When the bear turns up by their home, Sam, terrified, is more convinced than ever that it's time to leave the island. But Elena responds differently to the massive beast. Enchanted by its presence, she throws into doubt the plan to escape and puts their long-held dream in danger. A story about the bonds of sisterhood and the mysteries of the animals that live among us and within us. Bear is a propulsive, mythical, rich novel from one of the most acclaimed young writers in America. I just get a very deep emotional sense from this book. Of course, it's going to cover sibling dynamics. There's going to be a harder hitting family element to the story, but then you have this bear who just shows up and very much influences one of the sister's lives. And it definitely sounds like it's going to have a little bit of a mystic quality. I admit that I'm a little bit nervous about this one just because I fear that the animal is going to die. So if anybody has read an arc of the story or knows anything about it, please let me know if the bear dies or not, because I don't think I want to pick it up if the bear does die. But I was just so moved by the synopsis of this one that I wanted to go ahead and feature it here. All right. And the very last one for this category is the newest release from Rufy Thorpe. Again, she has been featured on Book of the Month in the past with her book, The Knockout Queen. This just says it's a bold, laugh out loud, funny and heartwarming story about one young woman's attempt to navigate adulthood, new motherhood and her meager bank account in our increasingly online world. Blisteringly funny and filled with sharp insight, Margot's Got Money Troubles is a tender tale starring an endearing young heroine who's struggling to wrest money 
money and power from a world that has little interest in giving it to her. It's a playful and honest examination of the art of storytelling and controlling your own narrative and an empowering portrait of coming into your own both online and off. So again, this is another author and story that I'm not familiar with. I never read The Knockout Queens, but I've heard good things about it. So again, this is another one that I would not be surprised to be featured in the month of repeat authors for Book of the Month. And speaking of repeat authors, moving on into the historical fiction category, Beatrice Williams has a new release coming out in June called Husbands and Lovers. Again, she has been featured a couple of times in the past for Book of the Month. So this is basically the strongest contender that I have for historical fiction, which is surprisingly low on releases for the month of June. There were hardly any historical fiction coming out in the month of June. This says, two women separated by decades and continents and united by a mysterious family heirloom discover second chances at love in this sweeping novel from the New York Times bestselling author of The Summer Wives. And that's all it says. That's all you get. So very, very vague, but it does say it's going to be a historical fiction slash romance. So if you love historical romance, this might be one that you want to check out. I don't think historical romance is something that Book of the Month features all too terribly frequently. So this might be one that you want to rush to grab if it is featured on Book of the Month. And the very last book that I have for this one is only just one that recently came on my radar. It is a book called The Glassmaker by Tracy Chevalier. It is 1486 and Venice is a wealthy opulent center for trade. Orsolo Rosso is the eldest daughter and a family of glassblowers in Murano, the island revered for the craft. As a woman, she is not meant to work with glass, but she has the hands for it, the heart, and a vision. When her father dies, she teaches herself to make beads in secret, and her work supports the Rosso family fortunes. Skipping like a stone through the centuries, in a Venice where time moves as slowly as molten glass, we follow Orsola and her family as they live through creative triumph and heartbreaking loss. In every era, the Rosso women ensure that their work and their bonds endure. So it sounds like this is going to be a generational novel. It sounds like it's not just going to stay set in 1486, but it's going to be moved through the centuries. So it sounds like we're going to be learning a lot about the Rosso women. So again, this was just very intriguing to me. 1486 in Venice, Italy is certainly not a setting that you see covered very often in historical fiction or prominently featured just at all. This is one that I wanted to go ahead and share because it is so unusual, but I do think it has a high possibility of being featured on Book of the Month. All right, y'all. And then moving on to the final category of fantasy, sci-fi, or magical realism, I only have one. This is really the only notable release in this genre that I found that I think could potentially be featured on Book of the Month, although I don't think that this author has been featured before, but it is called The Stardust Grail by Yumi Katase. It says, Maya Hoshimoto was once the best art thief in the galaxy. For 10 years, she returned stolen artifacts to alien civilizations until a disastrous job forced her into hiding. Now she just wants to enjoy a quiet life as a graduate student of anthropology, but she's haunted by persistent and disturbing visions of the future. Then an old friend comes to her with a job she can't refuse. Find a powerful object that could save an alien species from extinction, except no one has seen it in living memory and they aren't the only ones hunting for it. Maya sets out on a breakneck quest through a universe teeming with strange life and ancient ruins, but the farther she goes, the more her visions cast a dark shadow over her team of friends, new and old. Someone will betray her along the way. Worse yet, in choosing to save one species, she may condemn humanity and Earth itself. So that is definitely, definitely sci-fi set in the future. We have ancient civilizations, we have thievery, we have all of this stuff going on. So if you are a fan of science fiction, this again is one of the more notable releases in this category that is coming out and I think could potentially be featured on Book of the Month. All right, everybody, that is it. Those are all the predictions that I have that I think could be featured as either add-on selections or monthly curated selections for the month of June. As always, if you think there are additional releases that you think could be featured on Book of the Month, please feel free to leave those down below so that other people can also get some more predictions. If you have made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me a bear emoji in honor of Bear by Julia Phillips. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I typically post two videos a week, one on Wednesdays and one on Sundays, and I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which I always leave linked down below along with any books that I may talk about in a video. Until next time, y'all. Bye.